Archaeology and the Individual Part 2, Their Personal Identity. Okay, for part one of the individual, we talked about the data behind it. How do you reconstruct this person's life based on the actual human remains, right? We talked about the different places where you can go to get real data. Now, part two here, this is the more kind of touchy-feely aspect. Like, hey, but how did they feel? You know, it's that sort of thing. Man, some of this stuff is really hard to get at. And I will also say some of this stuff, you're never going to get it. But that's okay. That's okay. These are almost more questions we want to think about, you know, uh, over time as we, as we work on human remains. So uh, one of the first things, I think the first question to answer, if you're working on an archaeological site and there's human remains, there's a dead body, right there. What's the first question? Who is that? Exactly. That's okay. My question too. Who is this? So step one in the sort of uh, personal identity of the individual, who is it? And I like to think of this step one part as the driver's license stuff. You know, okay, what was their name? Okay, male or female. Okay, what was their height and their weight and all that kind of stuff, right? That sort of just the facts, ma'am stuff of, uh, of, of dealing with a, an individual. So that's step one. And of course, by what I've given you just there, you can tell. Sometimes you can get this stuff. Sometimes you can't. Are you going to know their actual name? Probably not. But you're going to start to get that. Were they male or female? Eh, you could get that. How tall were they? Ooh, you could get that. You know, and, and see, there's some stuff here. That's okay. Um, so first, who is that? Now, step two, what was their social ranking? What was their status in that society, right? Were they an elite person? Somebody who's like super rich and wealthy, a king and queen kind of thing? Or were they a commoner? an everyday person like you and me, right? How would you get that based on the human remains right in front of you? Think about it. How could you tell if they're rich or poor? It's pretty obvious, right? The artifacts themselves, of course, the associated artifacts that they're buried with, that will tell you, rich or poor, right off the bat. It's also like that location stuff, like I was talking about last time. If they're in the middle of a pyramid, probably an elite person, right? If they're just in a commoner's mass grave with a hundred other people with no artifacts, probably just a common person, that kind of thing. So we're getting at the social status of this, of this person in their society. Um, what else do I want to talk about there? So we have, we have their social status. Oh, uh, the, you can also add into this group their gender. And, and actually, more specifically, their gender roles, really. Because with a burial, you can tell based on the sex, if it's male or female. And then, on top of that, what were their gender roles in that society? What did a typical male do in that society? What did a typical female do in that society? Again, based on the artifacts, right? And what's interesting is, hey, let's see if you, you found a female burial that did some atypical stuff that maybe their associated artifacts are way different than the other females in that burial ground. That can be really interesting. Ooh, maybe this person was more of a shaman or this kind of thing. That's cool. And, and so you want to compare and contrast with the other uh, burials in that location. And then uh, finally, man, this is sort of the most over the top of all of it. How did they feel about themselves? And you're like, yeah, thanks, Kinkella. That's an easy one. They're, they're not alive. I can't really ask them. So I get it. But this is some of the most interesting stuff. Uh, meaning like, did they fit in to the world around them? Were they uh, accepted by society? Were they not accepted by society? 
See? And you can start to maybe hint at that. Are they buried on like the far side of the of the cemetery way over here? Maybe, right? And maybe that says something. Maybe they didn't fit in, you know? And so you can start to hint at their own sort of, at, at maybe what it was like to be them. That's of course the highest high in archeology. span If you can get stuff like that, you know, what, how did they feel inside their head while they were alive? Of course, a lot of times you can just only guess. So at the end of the day, you know, you're trying to reconstruct the who of who they are, their sort of, um, their, their societal position, number two, number three, their gender roles, and number four, how they felt about themselves. And if you can get a decent percentage of that stuff, you're doing pretty well. One thing I forgot, with step four, when I talked about, oh, that you can hopefully reconstruct how they felt about themselves, what is also included in that is their religion, their ideology, their overall belief system. So you can see how some of that you could really get from the burial, right? You could get ideas on their religion. They might actually have religious artifacts buried with them. And also even the location of the burial can have religious significance, the angle of the burial, you know, the, the bodies are aligned to north because north was where the afterworld was, that kind of stuff. Uh, that can be really helpful. So you can really get some decent guesses on the religious beliefs of the people of the past.